Hello to our Biomunich fans. Thanks for being with us. Today we welcome a very, very special guest, Christian Falk from Sportbild, one of the best sports journalists in Germany. Hello. Thank you, and it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for, Thanks for joining, joining us. us. We are glad that you agreed to give us an interview. Let's go to the first question. How looks a situation with Lewandowski? A lot of journalists are writing about his departure to Chelsea or Manchester City. This is a very important topic for Polish Bayern fans who would like to know more about it. So um, we know at the moment that uh, Robert is thinking about his future again because uh, he reached a lot of things at Bayern Munich. Uh, his target was being the best player in the world. He is now, he has won the championship. But um, he knows uh, that he has a contract. And uh, to be true, um, there are always rumors about Erling Haaland here in, in Germany and always connecting with Bayern Munich. But I can say uh, that, that won't happen. So, but um, nobody said it before. So Robert uh, is looking at that. And always when there is a little bit, oh, there's another striker to Bayern Munich. Mm, I'm not so fine with that. Uh, somebody has to say no. And I... No, at the past, there was also a topic with Lukaku. Uh, I remember that his agent uh, was also asking Bayern Munich, is it true that Lukaku will come to Bayern Munich? Robert doesn't know about that. So uh, he had, uh, Rumenig had to promise, no, no, there's nothing with Lukaku. So I think um, his agent, Pini uh, you know, he was a journalist before. He know how journalism works. He's talking a little bit here and he's talking a little bit there. And he has very, very good connections, especially to Chelsea and also to Manchester City and to many journalists uh, in the world, in England, in Spain. So I think the rumor is a little bit uh, above from him to test the market, because if there is any offer, we can go to Bayern Munich and say, look at that, they will pay a big amount for Robert. But um, mm. I can say there's no chance that Bayern Munich will let Robert go uh, this summer or next summer. So, and when his contract ends in 2023, you know, one year before they have to talk and um, then there will be perhaps a new topic, but not at the moment. And most of the time when Bayern Munich and Robert are discussing things, uh, he gets a new contract. Hopefully Robert will stay at Bayern a few more years and get closer to Gerd Miller's record of having the most goals in the Bundesliga history. Yes, so I think this will happen already in the next two games. So. Um, I was sure that uh, when he's coming back, because um, of course he was injured, uh, but uh, he was not out of training. He could do some things at home. Uh, his leg was okay, so he didn't he didn't lose his perfect fitness, you know. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, he knows he knows how to score goals anyway. And if you saw his uh, goal, the sec second one of him and the three 0 against Gladbach, there was so much power in his shot and. Uh, you know, he wants it with every everything he has and everybody's helping him on the team, especially Thomas Müller, who is his perfect partner. So, And he's the guy who makes a penalty. So I'm sure he will make 40 and perhaps 40 and plus. Yes, I agree with you. Robert is a great player and I, and I hope uh, he will, that he will play in Bayern for many, many years. Uh, second question. I've been thinking a lot about Julian Nagelsmann. Uh, I think he's a coach for yes. What do you think about him and uh, how do Germans view this move of Bayern? You know, if there would be opportunity to keep Hansi Flick, uh, it would be the first choice. Um, mm -hmm. You know, especially like Robert, Thomas Müller or Manuel Neuer. They have also contracts uh, till 23, like Hansi Flick would have. So it would be good for them together to work because they were so successful together and uh, they were his main topic players. But at the end, um, there was no chance to keep him. And so if you have to change something, um, there was always in the head of Bayern Munich uh, to bring Julian Nagelsmann uh, to Bayern. And uh, he, it's his big, big dream. So I think, especially for the young players, it will be very, very interesting to work with him. Uh, they are keen on working with Julian Nagelsmann I know that many of them are already now writing short messages and WhatsApp, especially WhatsApp with Julian Nagelsmann. And uh, so they are in contact and um, I'm sure he's intelligent enough uh, that he knows that he has to count on the main topic players like, and then the three again, Robert, Manuel and Thomas. So 
it can be very interesting and I hope very successful again. Will Bayern continue to play 4-2-3-1 formation? Will Nagelsmann want to play a formation like he does now in Leipzig? I think uh, he knows that the main style of Bayern Munich since Louis van Gaal is this system. So it will keep it and it will be the main system of Bayern Munich. But it's Julian Nagelsmann. So he will change things. Uh, I think um, he will also let other formations play. So he need a few more players to do that. But uh, at the end, um, it's the Bayern Munich system. And if, uh, you know, other teams have to change the system because, oh, there's a team coming, so we have to react. But Bayern Munich uh, don't have to react. Bayern Munich has to do their game and the others have to react. So it will be 4-4-2, four, four, but we will see Julian Nagelsmann has here um, or the other idea and um, it's getting interesting again. Personally, well, I think Bayern could play the formation that Leipzig currently play. The only thing we are missing uh, is a right wing back. There were rumors that uh, Nagelsmann wants to bring Mukele with him. And uh, are there any other options for this position uh, besides the Frenchman? So at the moment, I don't think Julian Nagelsmann will bring any player of, of Leipzig to Bayern. You know, that wouldn't be a good style and, you know, he gets some problem with his club. So they let him go. So I think he doesn't do anything that they get angry on him. Perhaps they want to sell him or a few other players they have to because the squad at Leipzig is too big. I think then they can talk, but at the moment it's not the, the right moment for discussing that. And, um, you know, Bayern Munich has not so much money on the transfer market this summer like you used to. So Upa Meccano was a very big transfer, over 40 million. Indeed, it's 42.5. So we won't see any transfer this summer, which is in this uh, category. So if there's a, a solution which is cheap, yes, they will do it. And they're always looking on this position, but uh, you have to find a player uh, which is good enough for Bayern Munich and doesn't cost a lot. So this is very difficult to find. A very good sentence. It's Julian Nagelsmann. But uh, what do you think about Sari Hamidi's relationship with other club members? Is he actually a toxic person, given his conflicts with uh, Hansi Flick uh, and Miro Klose, for example? So the two guys uh, you mentioned uh, will leave the club. Klose will, doesn't sign a new contract and Hansi Flick will also go. Also because of the discussion with Sally Hamidic, this is no secret. But um, the people the people who stay at the club, uh, like Oliver Kahn or Herbert Heiner, the president, um, counts on Brazzo. So he has no problems. He has the big man in the background from the Tegernsee, Uli Hoeneß, which uh, is making some calls and help him all the time. He needs him. and. Um, the main thing is Julian Nagelsmann was a choice of Hasan Salihamidzic. Um, Oliver Kahn made the deal, but everything before was done by Brazzo. So I think uh, it will be another relationship to this coach. So he will ask him for before transfers. So there don't be the problems like this season when uh, Hasan bought this player or this player and Hansi Flick said, I uh, don't want him. And so he won't play. Uh, I think these problems will not be next season and this makes it very easier to work together. And uh, now they have a little bit pressure because uh, it's not so easy to be better than Hansi Flick, <laughs> indeed. So, exactly. um, yeah. so they have to win. And this is no secret in Bayern Munich. You always have to win. Do you have any transfer information for Bayern? Is any player close to joining the club or is any player close to leaving the club? So, so I have to disappoint you because, uh, and to be true, they don't uh, want to do a lot of things this summer. So there are not so many secrets uh, we can uh, find out. But uh, I can tell you that they searching for young players. Um, Julian Nagelsmann wants to develop players. So there are players on the list I heard. We don't even know the names. <laughs> well, perhaps, I know, but <laughs> I hope. Um, but uh, they're not so famous like uh, Upa Meccano or so on. Um, there is a shortlist, of course, which they don't change every year. Uh, the players are like Florian Neuhaus, you know, he's very interesting for Bayern Munich, but um, I don't think there's enough money for him this summer. And I think it's good for him to develop one year more at Gladbach. So I'm sure we can see him at Bayern Munich, but this is a topic for next summer. 
So um, I have to disappoint you with the rumors of Vinaldom. It's not true. Um, what was other rumors? I think. Uh, Coupe Miners. Yeah. Pardon? Uh, Coupe Miners from uh, AZ Alkmar. Ah, I, 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 wait, I think we don't see him also. Draxler, we don't see. Um, so Coutinho was one rumor I was laughing about. Also not true. So uh, everybody, you know, it's always the same game. The agents uh, say to the clubs, oh, we have an interesting of Bayern Munich and uh, you have to make the offer bigger. Uh, because otherwise uh, we go to Bayern Munich. I think it was in the case of you and Draxel like that. So you will hear a lot of rumors this summer again. Bayern Munich was this player or this player or this player. At the end, I think uh, there won't be so many true stories about that. But one or the other surprise uh, can happen. And then um, if Bayern Munich is able to sell one of his players, then they can spend money again. So to listen, for example, or Zirkze will come back. Who is source, uh, they have the problem that I think the French doesn't take him uh, and Bayern Munich was expecting to get uh, 80 million euros for him. So this money they need for new transfers. According well, to our community, a very good transfer for Bayern would be Memphis Depay. The Dutchman's contract with Lyon is running out this summer, but I think he wants to uh, play to um, Barcelona. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, you know, Barcelona has not so much money at the moment. But Ipe is a name I've often, so often been asked in the, in the past why not Ipe? Why not Ipe? I think he's an interesting player because he has the quality for Bayern Munich. Um, but at the end, the rumors in the past were not true. But you said it already, he's a player which no contract. And if you've seen the last transfers of Brazzo, uh, there are only three things count. He has a release clause, he has no contract, or he's coming on loan. So one of the things counts on Depay, and they have to find a solution when Costa will go back to Juventus Turin, uh, they won't keep him. And um, they know that they have a kind of backup in Musiala, but um, they see that Musiala is a player for the middle, so it's not the best choice for this position. So perhaps there's a chance Depay this summer getting hot at the moment, uh, there is nothing, but uh, it can happen. Let's go to your book. Very interesting book. Oh, my background. Thank you very much. <laughs> when did you When did you get the idea to write uh, a book about FC Bayern, uh, and uh, why did you publish this book uh, in Poland? Oh, it was so five, six years ago uh, when I I was reading in my holidays a few books. And um, when I read the book, I thought um, there's so many books about football, but um, there are not such books like um, like Fever Pitch. You know, it's it's a perfect book because Fever Pitch takes the person to Anfield, and you are uh, not Anfield. Sorry, um, it's an um, Arsenal book. So you are there, and you see everything with the eyes of a fan. And I think this is a great idea. But I thought I'm much closer to Bayern Munich than he saw it in his youth. And it was the idea to, to put the people into the stadium, into the flight of Bayern Munich. Uh, how are the stars behind the scenes? And so uh, I wanted that the, the fans could see the fans and the club and everything about Bayern Munich through my eyes and how is it to sit there with Lewandowski and talking about football or um, drinking uh, some wine with Louis van Gaal or how is it when Uli Hoeneß is shouting at you and screaming and getting red. So I think uh, you can't write it in an article in a newspaper, but you can write it in a book. So um, it's a lot of patience in this book. And I think the readers can go through many, many years with Bayern Munich and it's not just seeing what I saw, they feel, oh, where were I at the moment? Or how do I saw this Champions League final? And you remember a lot of things yourself uh, were seeing on the screen. Or, um, it's um, a lot of emotion in the book and uh, I think a few secrets. How did you feel when Bastian Schweinsteiger insulted you at the press conference? The room <laughs> was full of journalists from the other newspapers. Did you think at that time that this might be the end of your career as sports journalist? 
No, no, because uh, I knew at the moment that I was right. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, I think uh, it was a little bit hard because Basti and me, we knew us uh, since uh, he nearly started his career when perhaps we are, I think we were eight, he was 18, I'm a few years older. So we played PlayStation together or we were, I was invited to a discotheque on his birthday. So it was hard uh, because I know that something breaks in this moment and this was our relationship but then um, you have to you have to make a decision as a journalist if you say mm, i'm the meaning that something is wrong at the moment and Bayern munich had problems and it was because of um Juan Gal made the decision that he has new leaders and one of them was bastian at the moment and he didn't perform so well it was a lot of pressure he was young so it was not an easy situation so um that's why i wrote this article where i wrote he's a mini chef <laughs> yes, and yes. he was very very angry about it and shouting and we were discussing and um after that i, I went to the press officer club and i said i won't write about this and uh, i know i wrote uh, a hard article about him so in my view it's okay if he insulted it it's no problem yes don't have to excuse but i think the other guys in the room will write articles about it so but i can't do anything and after that, uh, I was right, uh, the relationship broke and we didn't talk to each other for years. But the good thing is, um, and this is the beginning of the book when I go to Chicago and we're sitting together again and we're laughing about the old stories and uh, we are friends again. We have a good relationship. Um, in my last pod podcast, uh, he made an announcement for President Herbert Heiner. So he did me a favor and you see, so the relationship is very very good again and it's like that in football sometimes you go together sometimes <laughs> you don't uh, but at the end after the career uh, you stick together again and look at the things uh, you saw what was the reaction of the Bayern Munich community after the publication of your book it was a uh, it was very interesting because I thought oh because um, I didn't talk with the protagonist just a few which uh, I quote that um, the other things uh, things that I wrote before, um, which were just between us. And I thought, oh, what will they think about when I write about these things years after? Uh, but it was very positive. So uh, they said, oh, yes, I remember. <laughs> this happened, everything. So they, they saw that uh, there are, everything is true. And uh, I didn't write something that were, would I say, it, it's, it's insulting or so. It's, there are secrets, they know that they happened. Uh, I think uh, also perhaps Jürgen Klinsmann knows that he made a few mistakes and uh, he knows uh, that the team knew. So the team told me and I write it. So there are so many people who knows that uh, this is not wrong. So <laughs> you can't say, oh, oh, no, no, that's not true. That wouldn't, wouldn't count. Which memory is the most important to you that you describe in your book? I think the relationship of, of Bastian and me is uh, one of the main targets in the book. That's why I like it very much to, to tell that about that because uh, he was always a person. Uh, everything which happened in my career was connected with him. You know, world champion, travel. Bastian was always with me. And uh, also, if we don't talk to each other, uh, we knew about uh, what the other is doing. So I think uh, writing about this special relationship between a reporter and a star uh, was very, very important for me. But uh, there's so many sh funny things I, I like, like Frank Ribéry, when he's doing uh, crazy things with me, uh, putting water over me from the training camp or uh, hiding my tickets when I was standing in Moscow or in Tokyo and I didn't have my flight ticket for the Bayern Munich plane because he took it out of my bag. Such uh, moments which I love or still today. And uh, I think the funny parts, I love. <laughs> we have noticed that there are a lot of job offers on LinkedIn uh, website. Is working in such uh, a large company as FC Bayern is uh, a dream come true for many people? So it, the club is growing and growing. And, uh, you know, it's, I think uh, it's one of the nicest working places uh, just uh, to be around that i've been on uh, on friday the last time at Straße. if you go the stairs and you look at the pitch and 
everybody's playing there, everybody is hidden behind a curtain, but you are at Bayern Munich, so there are people who see that every day, and I think it's a, it's a big, big pleasure and for everybody who's working there, and it's, it's really a nice club, uh, very familiar, so uh, I think it's a good working place, so I don't know, you can't get very, very close in any job at Bayern Munich, but you always have the feeling of Bayern Munich there. So I think it's it's good. And uh, if there's a chance, why not? For me, it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give any tips for people who want to become a sports journalist? Yes. So, you know, there is not, not one rule because it's a very, very special job. So um, I had uh, colleagues uh, which were doing educations in a slaughtery or uh, they're working for one was working at a bank so there's not one way you can be a sport journalist i think important is that you have to find a way to be there so you start going to a newspaper and say can i start somewhere at your house and then i was starting uh, first uh, writing about police things Then I was uh, writing about uh, traveling. So, but I always said, I want to be a sports journalist and I want to go into the sport resort. And I tried and I tried and at the end they said, so you get your chance. And then I've, I was there. And so they wanted that uh, a report about these and this. And I said, oh, but uh, I want to report about Bayern Munich. Yeah, there are other reporters who write Bayern Munich, but you can, you have a chance to get in and then you have to be there. You have to be, When I started, the, the job of a, a sport reporter was a little bit uh, longer from the time because you had to go to discotheques to find the stars and eat them there because uh, it's not so easy to, to get a connection. And then you start at the morning. I remember when Lisa Rasu was coming uh, from the training's pitch because he was always the first who was there and was doing some yoga. And uh, he didn't talk at this time to German journalists because his German was not so good, but he came out and said, I'm watching you every day. You're always the first journalist here and you're always the last who is leaving. I'm always watching you. Don't forget it. And later he gave me the first interview because he saw me every day. I was alone there and he said, okay, he's like me. He's the first, he's the last, he's professional. And um, when Lisa was sleeping, I met uh, Oliver Kahn or Michael Ballack in the discotheque. So you have to be everywhere. <laughs> And coming to the end of our conversation, we would like to thank you for, for your time, sharing your knowledge and interesting fun, fun facts. For yeah. us as aspiring journalists, uh, it's very important. Thank you, Mr. Fogg. So I thank you. Keep in touch. And uh, I think we have a lot of fun with Robert uh, for years. So I, have, I think you know that uh, he made a, a medical that they were saying his, his body is younger than himself. So he can, he can play for years. And um, he has a very, very good partner for that. Uh, I was eating with Anna for lunch one day and she explained me everything, what she's doing for, for <laughs> Robert, uh, which food, and it's amazing. Uh, so I think he's keeping very, very well the next years. We wish you to be even better at what you love to do. And we wish you all the best in your private life. Thank you very much and stay healthy. Thank you. Stay healthy. It was a pleasure. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.